Alright, good afternoon, good morning, uh, good night, whatever your time zone is currently at. Um, welcome to a new stream. Uh, glad to have you all on board. So, welcome to the chat. Say hello, where you're from. Uh, let me know where you're tuning in because we're gonna do some cool things today. Uh, I, I had a cool idea, or at least I think it was cool. So, uh, you're gonna probably rate that idea once we're done. Um, also, did you notice that A, I improved my camera a lot? So, I think the image is super sharp right now. Um, B, of course, I improved my, my whole setup here, my background stuff. And C, um, what was C? I don't know. Oh, yeah, I have a new stream UI. So, uh, right here below the stream, social stuff. Also, if we go to the desktop view, which apparently, oh, it works today with my stream deck. That is next level, huh? Isn't that? Uh, also got a nice little uh, fleshy overlay. So, uh, welcome, Daniel, and welcome, everyone else. I hope you have a great week. Let me know how your week's going. Uh, I actually got a bit of a sore throat today. Uh, we already did our podcast recording. I can promise you tomorrow's episode is going to be great. So... Um, if you're not yet tuning into, make sure you, but I feel like whenever I say this, uh, you're like the most loyal followers, but here is podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the all the code podcast. What's up, Jan? What's up? Uh, yesterday we had the first office hours of galaxies, uh, galaxies.dev. If you don't know my new portal, um, I'll probably quickly show you that in case somebody didn't, haven't heard about it. Uh, I actually changed the branding and name a bit. Uh, I'm still tweaking the homepage, but here we go. Currently, we already got like four or five hundred members on Galaxy, which is, yeah, launch was one week ago. I think that's pretty cool. But I'm tweaking a lot of the things. I'm adding new content. Uh, I'm working out a few different sections of the landing page. But uh, so far, so good. Everything seems to work. Um, and as well, because I haven't actually haven't talked a lot about it lately, I just want to say that yes, I still run the Ionic Academy, of course, and most importantly, yes, we have monthly. Oh, that was too close. Yes, we do have monthly new courses coming. Um, just like the content, just like always, there are monthly fresh courses uh, coming to the Ionic Academy. I'm also reworking that page a bit, so a lot of marketing going on. Oh, Daniil, my body temperature is 38. Uh, I hope it's worth it. I do hope so as well. It, it might get even higher once we get to stable diffusion. <laughs> um, <coughs> <coughs> so you hear I'm, I'm giving my best for you. So thanks that you are also giving your best for me. The idea for today is, um, where is it? Where's my idea? Uh, I recently came across replicate.com. Um, so we all know ChatGPT is cool and stuff, but replicate.com was also pretty epic in terms of stable diffusion and what you can do. And I thought, well, why not do something cool? Uh, thanks, Rasman. Yeah, it is. But actually, I feel like I have this for about three days, but I feel quite good. So I hope it's going to be okay. Uh, we're starting a cruise. So after the stream, actually, my vacation for a week starts. Uh, so this is the last effort uh, today for the week before the vacation. Uh, Saturday we're going on a cruise for a week. Uh, I won't. I will have most likely limited internet access then. Um, so I hope it's not getting worse until then, and I can get uh, on the ship. Never did this before. I don't know what to expect. Uh, let's see. Stable diffusion, replicate. Uh, with replicate, so this is not featured or sponsored by replicate. I just found this to be interesting. So you can sign up for a free account at Replicate um, and can use some of their models. Uh, the most uh, famous and popular one is, of course, Stable Diffusion, and I think we're going to use that. But you can also easily tap into all these other models and um, you can easily test them. Well, can we test this as well? Um, and we're going to do it with Stable Diffusion. So um, I'm going to try and build an Ionic application uh, when we make calls, so they have, they even have a curl, yeah. So based on this curl, I think we should be able to uh, make our Ionic application hit the predictions endpoint. 
uh, with my replicate API token. Quick disclaimer up front, I'm doing this in an Ionic Angular front-end application. So usually that's not the best place to store your token. If you wanted to make this more secure, you would run a little server. You could just spin up a little express server, add your token in there in the environment and then make calls to that server. That should be uh, safer. So don't expose usually your secret keys in the front end. India, 30 degrees room temperature, damn. Do you, do you guys have something like winter in India? What's, what's the lowest temperature you get in India? Let me know. We got today, we had in the morning one degree uh, here in Germany. Siberia, <laughs> minus 17, really, Daniel? <laughs> oh, minus 17 is really... Uh, cognito token, yeah, that would be a nice idea as well, agree. Um, so let's go. I've brought up a blank new Ionic application. No, I haven't done so, but we're gonna do this. Uh, let's zoom into this a hundred times. Ionic start uh, replicate app. I'm so un, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, replicate type Angular today. We got, of course, also, oh yeah, I forgot blank. Sorry about that. Oh no, I know, pick list. Oh, abort, abort. Uh, that's happens when I make this too big. Blank, of course, blank is the template and the type is Angular. Yes, I wanna override everything. So here we go. I next start replicate a blank dash dash type Angular. Uh, 12 to 16 degree, Hanyo, is, is this really the lowest you get in, in winter? That's crazy. Are there other regions in India where it's like, I know from, for example, in Japan, I think, um, I think in Japan, it's like in some regions you really have summer. Uh, so where bread was it was coming from last week and in some regions you have winter and, and snowy stuff. Is it like that in India or is it just everywhere like that? Um, Hanoi, uh, why not React.js? Angular is still alive. Oh, Angular is more alive than ever. Um, have you seen the latest news? I'm of course also here to inform you about the latest news in the technology world that are going on. So besides this great channel, which I hope all of you are subscribed to, um, there was, this is a lie. It says 20 people watching. I'm on the stream, it says eight people watching. What's the truth? Where are these 20 people? I, I d are there 20 or eight people? YouTube is trolling me. Can anyone confirm, like, do you see numbers of, of, of what the? Okay, no, it suddenly says 20. Anyway, well, that's cool. Thanks, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, summer for us. Uh, okay, yeah. So in terms of Angular versus uh, React, interesting thing uh, from Theo, which I mm, have different opinions about, but Theo actually <laughs> made a video uh, called the Angular comeback just a day ago. You should check it out. So he's really, uh, how do I describe him best? He has very strong opinions about different things. I don't agree to many of those opinions. However, this video is really good. We should maybe just react to this, can you? When I open this, um, can you hear this? Let me give this a try. We never did this. Do we, are we going to do like the 2022 style of we are react, reacting to a video? Isn't that, isn't that how the cool kids are doing it? Uh, oh no, it's not. It's not coming coming about uh, the output I see. Uh, you should all watch this video afterwards. It's quite interesting. Um, it is about why uh, Angular is becoming interesting for, well, probably not for him again, um, but why it's becoming better. It's mostly about uh, signals and how signals gonna improve Angular instead of RxJS. And, uh, also, the fact that Angular is moving forward quite quickly lately with our self-closing tags. So he did have a screenshot about that somewhere here in the beginning. Yeah, self-closing tags are a um, thing with Angular now as well. They're adding signals and they're doing a lot of things. So it really feels like Angular is moving forward. Um, I think he's not really, still doesn't like Angular. That's okay. But Enterprise still loves Angular. Um, so I do think that we're gonna see, um, I don't know if I'm gonna do more Angular content. I mean, I do everything. I do Angular, I do React. Uh, it depends on the, on the room temperature in a, in a given day, which, which framework I select. So I don't really have a preference right now. 
I'm gonna put it right here. I'm gonna zoom this in a few times. So all that we do today could of course be done with Ionic React as well. Uh, Angular number, well, I actually don't know what number one means, but uh, hi Cybernetic, have a nice day. Thank you, you too. Vue is my choice, Daniel. Uh, that's also totally fine. I know a lot of people using Vue. I'm actually, Vue is the thing I'm least into. Uh, I really have pretty much no idea about Vue. Um, I feel a bit bad about it, but I, on the other hand, like I can't do, <laughs> I really can't do everything. By the way, if you're interested in Vue, um, I do actually have a great course creator who is now creating a view course for galaxies. I'm really looking forward. Guillaume, you might have seen him doing, he's doing a lot of super base stuff. He's currently working on a course for galaxies. So uh, really looking forward to that one. Now here is our Ionic application and we're going to try the stable diffusion API. Let's do this with insomnia first. Um, and let me drink get a sip of coffee. Oh. Oh. So I gave this a try. Here's, uh, can I, <laughs> I can't zoom into insomnia. Can you please do anything about this insomnia? Reload window, minimize, no, view toggle, no, actual, zoom in. That sounds good. Oh, there we go. Zoom. Can you please zoom in more? Zoom. Oh, that is about an unbelievable zoom. Shortcut not working, thanks. Epic. Okay. okay, okay, so we just click a hundred times on zoom in until you can read this. So the idea is you make a request to API replicate.com version one slash predictions, a post request. Uh, we do have an authentication header with my token from my account. And as a JSON, we're gonna have some prompt. So uh, let me know a prompt, put prompt in the chat and I'm gonna send the prompt. This should generate an image. So put something that should create a cool image in the chat and I'm gonna use the first and maybe also the second if you're if it's a cool prompt. And if it's a bad prompt, I'm not using it. So put something good in there. Um, and make it interesting. Don't make it just a, a horse on a, on a rabbit. That's just too easy. Make something cool. Um, and then we're gonna integrate that. Meanwhile, I'm already preparing our Angular app. Um, so I'm just gonna inject the HTTP client as we're gonna definitely make HTTP calls, import HTTP client from an angular common slash HTTP. We could also do this in a, um, now we're doing it exactly like this. Um, meanwhile, probably also a little service. So let's do Ionic generate service services. Um, I don't know, it's, I'm gonna call this replicate. Uh, oh, there we go, Cybernetic has a great idea. Cyberfunk doctor with cat on head hacking Angular photorealistic. Okay, nice, we're gonna take that. You were the first. Uh, we do have something from Jan as well. Probably gonna do that afterwards, let's go. Uh, okay, so there we go. We're gonna send this. The interesting thing is I now get back this kind of strange response um, with a status starting. And under URLs get, we get this API. So I'm gonna have to call this API with another get request. And I also need to attach my headers again. So my authorization header needs to be attached as well. And when I make a request to that endpoint, I get something like this. Once again, cyberfine, locks. Um, did I use stable diffusion version? Can, let me quickly confirm this. Yes, I use stable diffusion. So that is what the version here is about. Um, so this is our reply. And usually you have to catch something like a webhook because generating that image might take time. We might just implement something where we pull this every two seconds until the status is succeeded. And then under output, we're gonna have that image. So I hope you gave a nice prompt. What in, what is this? What did you just create cybernetic? <laughs> Cyberfunk doctor with cat on head, hacking angular. <laughs> what the heck, this is, going, this is going to be my new, my new channel image. <laughs> 
It's like the worst image generated with AI I've seen so far. Okay, let's see what we got as well. Angular, React, and Vue in a royal... Oh, that sounds nice. Let's see, let's see. Uh, let's see what we get if we put in that as a request here. We could maybe add like uh, a few factors to this. Uh, can I grab this one? Yeah, grab that. Is it already done? Yeah, it is. Okay, this is not what I expected this image to become. So here we go, Angular, React, and Vue in a Royal Rumble. <laughs> oh man, we could do this all the time, right? Okay, let, let's try and craft an ironic, ironic rap around this. <laughs> oh, this is going, I, I like, yeah, much funnier than the cat. I, I like where this is going. I also like your ideas. Uh, let's go. Uh, what, what do we need? Uh, we need an app, uh, the best AI images. Wow, what the, what the, that's the worst title I ever gave my page, I think. Anyway, uh, let's get rid of all these things. Uh, we gotta put in an ion, we gotta put in a diff. I think we're gonna make this a bit responsive, but if we make this responsive, I could also just use an ion row. You also have this, like you start coding and then you have like five different ideas and rewrite your code all the time. Uh, I don't know if it's just me. So ion call, we're gonna make this somehow responsive. Uh, ion input, uh, we're gonna use an, and do we use an ng model? Yes, ng model uh, term. We probably also wanna have more let me quickly think about this. Do we need more than just a term? Maybe later, maybe later we're gonna add something. Um, let's style that. Uh, use something like, uh, how do we style the ion input? I always hate that. Uh, is it CSS variables or is it something else? Uh, 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 the background is minus background. Okay, so ion input dash dash background red what they said the background yes perfect perfect that looks not too bad but of course we're going to use something lightish gray we probably give the whole input some padding or is it fine oh, maybe it's fine uh, maybe maybe gonna um, yeah of course we have no placeholder let's say placeholder uh, create a cool AI image. Okay, that's also the worst uh, placeholder I've ever seen, but nonetheless, this is gonna be great. Um, I thought it was using React this time. Well, we can we can easily con convert this to React. Um, uh, how do we give this inside padding? Um, I think there was something. Basically, the most important part happens in our service. So, in our service, uh, we're gonna use. We could also use fetch, for example. If you if you would now use this with um, React, you could just create a provider or custom hook where you're using fetch. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fetch this a point. So, get prediction. Although with React, I might. Um, I might recommend something like Next.js because then you can have everything on um, uh, inside a server route and then your environment is also secure. So this HTTP post to predictions and then we have the body. Let's make a body object, const body. Uh, our body should look something like this. Uh, version, yeah, that's the version we need to define. This is the input. So I'm gonna use the prompt that we pass in. Good. Uh, never using Angular before, but I like, yeah, if you like Nest, you're gonna like Angular because Nest is kind of using the structure of Angular. So uh, watch out, we're gonna do a few cool things today. Um, we're gonna have a lot of different files. So you see, it's not just all one file. Uh, there's a bit more going on with Angular. Now, if I do this, what, what am I getting back? And I should style the header. I like it when my header has a color uh, primary. I do get back this object. Um, 
Actually, we could use something like JSON to TypeScript to generate that object. I think there's also an extension in, isn't there? Uh, JSON to JS to. Damn, that was a type generator. JSON to TypeScript or API to TypeScript. JSON to TS. That sounds good. Uh, hey, that is cool. Let's install that one. Uh, and four, 400,000 installs. Okay, I just need to press Shift Control Alt V. <laughs> oh, I like these extensions. Thank you so much. Um, Shift. Uh, I don't know, anyway. Let's see, JSON to convert from clipboard. Oh, it does it in place. Well, that is probably not the best place to do it. Let's do it uh, in here. But it seems to work. JSON convert from clipboard. Nice. Um, I mean, this is basically it. I wouldn't call it, let's call this predictions um, or prediction, actually. Uh, oh, and this is the wrong page to add this. This certainly needs to go into our servers or into a file with interfaces. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, prompt, prompt, no, actually you don't need prompt, prompt uh, in the input element here. If you are, um, if this is the same name, you can just use prompt. So prompt as it is here is the same as this. This is completely the same. Um, so you don't need to do this. Only if I would do something like this dot prompt, then you would have to use it like this. But if it's exactly the same name, you can just do it like this. Um, okay, quick, quick little tip here. So this will return a prediction. Um, however, that prediction is not that helpful. What we need is to also call the API with the URL. Um, so how do we call the other function get, what is the other one? Get prediction data for a specific ID. So this is the endpoint we're gonna hit. Uh, is it include, actually it's included here, right? So we should probably pass that get value uh, to, yeah, get prediction data for a URL. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do it like this. Uh, and then on that page, let's also do the, the thing again. Um, my convert from clipboard, um, prediction detail. Oh man, so many interfaces. I should put this in a different uh, folder. So if I make a call, this.http get to the URL, we should see something like prediction detail as a result. And from there, we have to check if the status is succeeded. And maybe we're gonna do that retry logic in our page. Um, I don't know yet. Let's just keep it like it is for now. I'm also gonna put the interfaces all in a, in a separate file. Uh, interfaces. Oh no, I need to export all of them, right? Uh, oh, will it will it just work? No, it won't. I wonder why this is not complaining. Does it just work? Or I, I think I do have to. It can't be like this, right? It should complain at least. At least that's what I think. But we're actually close. Yes. Well. Um, that is interesting. That is interesting indeed. I, did, I thought I had to export that. Okay, we're gonna, gonna take care of the AI, uh, the UI later. Uh, for now, let's add a button. So get ma get prediction or start pr start prediction. Uh, I'm gonna call that once we're done with the input. Ion button. Uh, click start prediction get my image so there we go okay that looks horrible and I have a typo um, okay uh, expand full okay oh, still this image is still epic 
What are you doing, Rodrigo? I'm trying to use the Replicate Stable Diffusion API with Ionic currently. Um, so we're gonna have a little input here, which should pretty soon work. Uh, then we're gonna add a bit of styling to that page, hopefully. And then we're gonna get an image. So we can already start that image stuff. Uh, we're gonna inject now our service. Uh, how did I call this? Replicate. Replicate service. There we go. And then we just need to say this time uh, replicate service, get predictions for our term. Now we're going to probably add a few more controls so we can make this even better. But for now, that's what we're going to do. Um, the problem here is um, that we, um, at some point, we're going to have to wait, I guess. But I don't know at which point. I uh, definitely want to show some kind of loading. So let's add the loading controller from Ionic Angular. And let's show them. Uh, therefore, we need to make this an asynchronous function. And we can add loading. Boom, boom. Okay. Cool. Hello, please make this async. Thank you. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, now you're suddenly complaining about this? About the missing interfaces? Really? Uh, service 25, get prediction detail. How can you complain about that? Oh, because URLs, well, get and cancel is twice. Metrics can have a predict time. Uh, interface input is prompt. Yeah, that's still fine. I still feel like all of them had, should have an export. Cannot find name prediction. Uh, let's see. Okay, now it should work. Yes, perfect. There we go. Um, on my homepage, I should be able to get back Okay, after predictions, I get back this thing and then I need to make another call. So we should probably not subscribe to the result, but have a pipe block instead and switch map to a different observable. Okay, welcome to a little lection, little section here on RxJS. <laughs> uh, hello, William. Oh, William is here, master of RxJS. Oh no, I feel bad already about doing something. What is your Visual Studio Code theme and icons theme? By the way, I'm a big fan of you and I learn a lot with you. Thank you, first of all, Rodrigo. Hope you're subscribed to the channel uh, and hope you have a Galaxy's account. And the theme is called Shades of Purple. Uh, there we go, a professional theme by Ahmad Awais. Um, I love this. Uh, I think it's also, let me look up my theme. My file icon theme is material icon theme. Uh, and somebody just said, uh, Rasman, yeah, loading dismiss, exactly. Um, but I'm gonna do it here. By the way, we can also use the new uh, subscribe. Let's do this, let's do this in a cool way. So if you wanna handle uh, this in a cool way, the cool kids today do it like this. Um, oh, I just noticed something. I know why you only hear me and why you don't hear anything else. Uh, because I haven't selected the right audio interface. Mm, should I switch this right in the stream? I probably shouldn't. So I'm sorry that we don't have any background music today. That's because I messed up uh, <laughs> because I didn't select the right audio interface. Just keep playing your own audio and everything's cool. Um, so for everyone, this is the new way. Um, so you pass an object to the subscribe block with next and error. Uh, I think it actually looks a bit better. And we're gonna add loading dot dismiss in here. So in the error case, we're also doing this and we're gonna do it in here as well. And I'm also gonna do an async in here. Okay, now switch map. Um, we actually have at this point, what do we have at this point? What's it? Uh, get predictions returns a prediction. So we don't really have to do it like this. 
So, but this is what we get. And then we're gonna return this dot replicate service. We could probably could have probably done this directly in the servers. Um, but maybe I'm gonna add a little. Uh, I'm just gonna do a little delay, I think. Uh, where is, by the way, the URL? Uh, URLs get. URLs dot get. My prediction. Um, before the switch map, I just add a casual delay of. I don't know how long do we let's let's delay this for a sec a second. Then we get my prediction. Then where's by the way where's Blind Ray and where's uh, Chuck? Chuck wanted to join us today. Chuck, are you here in the chat? I don't think so because usually Chuck would say at least hi, uh, or I haven't seen it. Chuck and Blind Ray, are you with me today? And thanks Rodrigo that you're subscribed. Highly appreciate that. And why is YouTube just showing me? If I look at Streamlabs. It shows me 28 viewers. If I look at YouTube, it shows me... Yeah, suddenly it becomes also 28. That is nice. Thanks all. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, enjoying the chat. If you got any questions, as always, let me know. Mm. And already think about some predictions that we can run through this epic prediction uh, image generation stable diffusion AI. Uh, throw in all the keywords machine. My final result. Okay, that should be our uh, image. So... Once we get that, this should be a PNG, right? And we don't need authentication. So that means if I do get the image, um, I do get the image. Uh, yeah, if I do get the image, uh, it should it should just work. I think I don't need to convert anything result dot output dot something or oh, where is it uh okay it's the first item of output i hate to do this but we're gonna do it like that isn't that like first nowadays uh, i thought but it, it knows that output is an array right isn't there like a first function with typescript nowadays uh I'm, i know I'm, i mean i can do it just like this um, but I thought, I thought that would be like first, uh, something, hmm. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, back to the view. Let's try this. Let's give this a try. Uh, did we have a prompt or we can, uh, let's say create a cool, uh, oh, what is cool? A crowd of developers. Uh, how do you how do you pronounce worship? worship? What the? F uh, worship, right? The crowd of developers worshiping uh, a big React logo, photorealistic uh, HD. Okay, get my image. Okay, that works great. No access. Oh no, I can't make course requests to them. Oh, that makes the whole thing more interesting. Ooh, then I know what we're gonna do. Mm, or at least I have different ideas about what we could do. Uh, we could use a course proxy or... Uh, is there still a course proxy available? I don't think so, Ryan. Um, I mean, I could probably spin one up real quickly. Uh, fast and reliable. I haven't seen this one before. Anyone got a recommendation for a simple uh, course proxy? Yeah, it's capacitor native HTTP. The problem is this is not fixing the problem right here on the uh, browser. Yeah, if you're using capacitor HTTP, it usually only solves the problem on a real device. I mean, we can run this on a device. Why not? Uh, probably that's our best bet. Or if I use a quick, let's see if I got a quick express server somewhere. Uh, did we create something together? Um, we once did an open AI node server once upon a time. 
Um, that was an interesting thing as well. So I could probably just reuse that. Um, let's see if we can quickly get this up and running. I'm actually not interested in all the uh, open AI stuff in here. I just want to make my call through that server. So let's call this one. Uh, then I need to handle the models. I don't want to do that actually. Yeah, let's run it on a device. Let's do this. Let's go for capacitor. Capacitor for the rescue. Uh, plugins. Uh, what's it called? HTTP. What is the capacitor native HTTP plugin? Um, I think you can enable this real quickly. Exactly like this. Capacitor HTTP enabled true. True. However, again, as far as I know, this shouldn't change a uh, uh, freaky horse. This shouldn't change. Yeah, still on the browser, I would still make the request. So we're gonna have to add this and build a local app, a uh, native app. Cool. Uh, didn't expect this for today, but here we go. No problemo. Uh, what's going on here in the chat? Uh, if it's just a demo, you can try using the Chrome extension. Mm, good point, yes. Let me see, Chrome extension course. Any recommendation for that? Um, uh, does it work just like that? I haven't used that extension in probably years. Uh, but it looks like it's going to be quite easy. So do I have to turn it on somehow? Um, by the way, let's do this. Ionic cap at iOS. Uh, how do you run this extension? More tools. No, it should be here, right? If it's an extension, there it is. Uh, it's a course. Uh, I haven't used this in a long time. So let's see. I will also, meanwhile, bring this up uh, on the simulator. So Ionic Cap. Uh, something with live reload. NPX cap run iOS live reload. Uh, we only need to talk about the target. Target in this case should be a simulator. Do I have something? iPad Pro, iPad, iPhone 13 Pro. That sounds good. Going with that one. And that should also bring up our live reload here again, usually. Oh, great. Uh, can I zoom into this a bit? Yeah, a bit, somehow. <laughs> um, okay, is this course extension uh, enabled now or not? Um, ba -ba 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 uh, yeah. I'm gonna do this as well. Access control, it's, it's yeah. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I don't know, star sounds good. Do I have to whitelist something specific or will it just work? I really want it to just work. Oh no, now I clicked. <laughs> uh, okay, apparently it's still not working. Oh yeah, I should probably, now it's on. Okay, um, let's see. What was my last, uh, uh, what did I say? Something like, uh, just press the logo. Thanks, Resman, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, a crowd of developers worshipping the ang. Now we wanted to do the React logo, photorealistic. Get my image. Uh, 401. That's good. You did pass an auth. Yes, this is good. This is progress. Nice. It seems to work. Thanks uh, for the idea with the extension. Uh, so this is definitely the new er issue. And we can certainly fix that easily. So let me just quickly save my term. I'm gonna reuse that term now. And I'm gonna use in the predictions, of course, we need to attach a header to our call here. Um, the third is the header. Uh, can we do this just easily? Can I just say 
authorization and then attach our header. Uh, let's see. This is not what I want. Nope, no, thanks for all your calls. This was an epic image. Uh, I want my header. There we go. Authorization. So I'm going to attach the token right in here. Please don't do it like this normally. But let's try. Get my image. Ah. Uh, why is it blocked? It did already work before. Uh, is it blocked because of some kind of credential stuff that needs to be enabled here? I mean, we've been... F uh, access all credentials. Uh, when this action must be origin. I don't know. Uh, is allowed in your browser. <laughs> I mean, everything looks good to me. Can we just? That works great. Not. I uh, get my. Oh come on! Why are you not working? Not making my life easier today. Not making my life easier. Um, but we're gonna figure that out. So let's do a little bit of debugging. I, by the way, always use the inspect tool uh, because Safari always failed me in the past and uh, I just decided that this worked better. Let's see how it works in the app. Uh, yes, that is a different story, huh? There we go. Here's my prediction. Uh, the URLs. I then made another request. Thanks for subscribing. Oh, and I didn't pass the header to the second call. Yeah, that's my bet. That's definitely my bet. Uh, so there we go. I could probably have a global interceptor. Uh, actually, that should be quite easily. Um, we could do this quite easily. I just did this the other day. Didn't want to do this. Yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, let's see. This is. Uh, how did I call this? I should give my my projects better names. So we can just have an authentication interceptor function. Okay, this is now going crazy, but you're gonna love this. Um, in our app module, we are going to add this little auth interceptor. Uh, from Angular Common, I don't need anything like this. I also don't need anything like that. The only thing I need, in fact, is to clone my request and put in my token uh, in the app module, just like this. So request clone, there we go. And once we got that, we can use our um, HTTP client just like this here. So provide HTTP client, that also means I can remove it from here. This is the new way of using Angular, the functional approach of many things. Um, so instead of importing the whole module, you can just add it to the providers, provide HTTP client, in this case with interceptors, our uh, token interceptor. This is really new stuff. Um, I kind of like it because previously you would have to create a class for the interceptor and now you can just have the uh, token interceptor in a functional approach uh, just like this. Okay. Um, we should, by the way, be good to make the calls and remove this now. Because now we don't need to send this as it will be automatically attached. This also means I should get the data here. So let's see. Back to inspect. Back to making the call. Get my image. Okay, first part did already work. Second part is not working. Good. Uh, my final result. Input. Um, uh, did I just call the same thing again? Get prediction data. My final results should certainly... Uh, it is in status starting. Okay, let's see. If I would take the URL again... Did it actually make any kind of delay? Oh, are we doing, let's see. Are we displaying the loading? Yeah, we're displaying that. Let's see. One, two, th there wasn't a five second delay, no way. Oh, now it comes, here we go, oh no. Uh, e cancel, output, there we go. Output number one. 
So that means I think I got the image. I think I got the image. Uh, so let's say lock my image should be this here. Um, and we should be able to display an image. Uh, let's do another column. Image source equals image. Let's only display this if image uh, is not an empty string. Uh, okay. I'm gonna give that the size of 10. Uh, no, actually full size. This one also size 12 uh, class ion text center. And now let's see the magic. We're gonna check this out. Okay, this is close. <laughs> this is definitely not the React logo. It's a Reace logo, but it's definitely a crowd of uh, photorealistic developers. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, I should do the, the prompt again from the beginning. What was your prompt? Uh, yeah, the, the royal match. Uh, let's see. Um, Angular React and view in a royal rumble match. Let's add something to make this more spicy. Um, what are pe cool people doing to make their images even better with stable diffusion? Uh, HT, dramatic, yeah, we definitely need dramatic lighting and detailed. Uh, dramatic lighting and detailed. By the way, one thing I noticed is that we are somehow hiding the loading spinner quite early. Um, or at least it feels like we're hiding it very early. I don't know why that is the case. Oh, we have a fixed duration. Oh. Generating image. Now it's perfect. Now it's perfect. Wait for me. Wait for me. So, uh, oh no, my sh my nice string is gone again. Uh, let me copy your string again. Uh, where's the Royal Rumble match? Or prepare something else that would be likewise epic. Um, that was the string. Plus, we're gonna do it. Yeah, we're gonna do everything. HD dramatic. Okay, Angular React and view in a Royal Rumble match HD dramatic lighting detailed. Let's get my image. Okay, generating image. The loading spinner should really stay up until we get the final result. Da, da, da. <laughs> nice. I mean, this is interesting. That more, looks more like the uh, battle on Geonosis than <laughs> the Clone Wars, but uh, <laughs> can we do something with Star Wars? I don't know. Can, can we do? Uh, and what, what other inputs could we do? Number of images? No. Number of denoising steps? S scale for K Euler? Okay. Seed, random seed, leave blank to randomize. Specifying things not to see in the output. That's interesting as well. Pixel dimension? Okay, yeah. So we could have probably uh, used more uh, prompts and we could also generate more outputs. But overall, this is like a decent start. Yeah, let's do something. Um, can we do? Oh, I still can't do in the browser, right? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're still mad with me. Anyway, I don't need you. I got my real device here. Um, what can we do as well? Like uh, lightsaber fight between uh, Angular and React developers on Geonosis. Uh, epic lighting um, uh, planets in the background HD. I don't know. <laughs> I'm really bad at this. Is really something you should or everyone should get better with, I guess. And the creation of these prompts and how you can really make the best prompt to get the the best result. Um, let's see what this prompt gives. It takes really long. Is it actually working? Oh, I suspect there was an error. Uh, now there's not evaluating. Uh, yeah, okay, it's not completed after five seconds. So that means we should do something about that. Uh, let's add a function, Paul URL. Um, URL, URL. Oh no, of course it's a string. Uh, so if uh, there's no 
if not result output, so that means if it's not yet finished, um, we should do something and we should do this. Okay, so if it's there, everything's cool. But if not, we need to pull the URL uh, probably with a little timeout or something. Um, let's see. This uh, pull URL. Uh, do we have access to the URL right here? Yeah, we still should have res URLs get, exactly. So that means it didn't work before. Uh, we're gonna do it in here. That means, okay, log pull URL. Uh, I wish I, oh no, yeah. But we can easily do this. Let's disable the delay. In that case, it should always go into the error block and should always do it like this. That means we could probably just use a timeout here or delay um, after a timeout of let's say one second. We're gonna do this again. We should probably also keep track of this subscription and uh, clean up after us once we're done. Okay, so do it again. Or maybe we're gonna do it like two seconds later. Give this a bit of delay. I assume that we should also um, do this into with our XJS in a better way. I feel like there's definitely a better way to do this. Mm, async result. So I think basically we can do the same in here. So if we still don't have an output, we're gonna do our poll function again. Uh, otherwise we need a way to handle our loading. Can we, from the loading controller, dismiss like the topmost controller? Yeah, it, it dismisses the top overlay. Nice, I like that. And we also don't really need async here. So let's see. Um, we need a really complicated, uh, I need a really complicated input now to make this work for like 10 seconds. Uh, or five seconds or something. Um, so, I mean, we had this one. Uh, Angular, oh, how do we do this? Um, uh, Royal Royal Rumble match. Uh, I, maybe, maybe it's already enough. Let's give it a try. Uh, let's see, so get my image. It fails here, oh, come on. Uh, my final result. Uh, uh, there is nothing at result dot output. Oh, yeah, output is null. We can't even access this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, and I should do it in here as well. Okay, understood, understood. Fixed. Next, get my image. Okay, did not work. Pull URL. Do it again. Pull URL. Yes, and it works at some point. Nice, we, we've built the, the easiest polling logic in the world, but it works. And that's the most important part. What is this, by the way? It looks like UFC fighting. <laughs> we really, I'm really, are there any good uh, stable diffusion prompts? Like there must be a guide about good stable diffusion prompts somewhere. Uh, yeah, thanks for that. Uh, from portrait photo of Asia, okay. Can, by the way, does ChatGPT know me? Does it know me? Let's rewrite this one here. Um, so if I say something like, uh, what was this? Simon, Simon Grimm, Ionic Expert, Portrait photo of uh, Asia Old Warrior Chief. Yeah, why not tribal panda makeup, blue on red side profile, looking away, serious eyes, 50 millimeters portrait, photography, hard rim, lighting, uh, photography. Sounds reasonable. <laughs> uh, sounds reasonable. Uh, let's see, I don't know. This is gonna take like ages to generate, isn't it? Uh, that's not me. <laughs> but, but, but thanks. It should know me, like, can we, uh, chat GPT, let's see. 
uh, new chat. G give me a summary of Simon Grimm, the Ionic uh, developer expert. Simon Grimm is a software engineer and Ionic developer expert who is known for his expertise in developing cross-platform mobile applications using the Ionic framework. He has more than 10 years of experience. Yeah, that's kind of true. And has worked on various projects ranging from multiple well-known figure in the Ionic development has contributed to various open, <laughs> including the popular <laughs> What the hell? This is so interesting. Uh, apart from his work in the Ionic community, Simon also writes articles on his personal blog, speaks at conferences, says no expert. He is, okay, this is, this is a lie. He is also a Google developer expert for Angular, which is the underlying framework. I mean, if ChatGPT is saying this, that's cool, but I'm not. I always wanted to be a Google developer expert for Angular. I never was one because I don't know. Apparently, I'm not good enough. Um, <laughs> overall, so as a highly skilled, experienced developer who has made significant contributions. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> what the heck? This is this is funny. <laughs> So thanks, ChatGPT, uh, for the nice summary of me. I'm probably going to use this in, in future CVs. Um, can, you, can, you, can you write a fictional CV for Simon Grimm? Certainly. Oh, that looks good, right? We don't need any other tool for that. Yeah, all the skills, all the skills. 10 of 10, Ionic Academy founder and instructor. Yes, yes, uh, so much going on. What is ECMA Corporation? I've never been part of anything called ACME Corporation. And I'm also not part of XYZ. Okay, this is just a fake, okay, I think. Okay, yeah, this is just uh, an example. <laughs> do this, do, do see. No, I, I didn't co-author Ionic in action by Manning Publications. I never worked with Manning Publications. <laughs> ChatGPT is such a lie. It's such a lie. Uh, but I want to generate one image with myself. How do we get this? Uh, create a portrait of Simon Grimm, the Ionic developer expert. Um, of Simon Grimm as a pirate captain. Uh, okay, I may probably. Uh, I don't know if he's getting me. Of Simon Grimm uh, as a captain, tribal panther, make a blue on red. Yeah, I okay. I mean, we can leave the rest like it is. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Let's give it. Uh, final try. Yeah, I'm learning a lot about myself from ChatGPT. Um, so I'm a, I, apparently I'm an. Um, I've read books for many publications. I was at the University of Berkeley. Um, now that is interesting. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it's not me. I wonder if this should be able to use images of myself, like. There should be images. When I look up Simon Grimm, there are images. Um, I can also try my old name. Maybe it has my old name. Hmm. Yeah, it definitely looked like Jack Sparrow. True. Um, yeah, no. Okay, it's getting more and more ridiculous. <laughs> the, the pirate a minute ago was definitely better than this. Uh, anyway, um, this was interesting. Uh, this was the Replicate API. Um, we solved some issues with the API, especially that you don't immediately get the result. So in that case, you can just build your own little uh, polling logic and just do whatever works for you, one second, two seconds, and just make calls to the API and check if the result has come through. Same is uh, what you can do for the Stripe API sometimes, because sometimes you can't catch a webhook, like in our case with Angular, we can't really catch a webhook, uh, and therefore we needed this little logic. Uh, what interesting, yeah, uh, definitely using native HTTP calls. So if you want to prevent cores, just move to a native device or a simulator <coughs> and use the capacitor HTTP plugin and all your sorrows are gone. 
Um, additionally, also give ChatGPT a try and see if it can <laughs> write your um, CV. And finally, the service, the service was pretty easy. By the way, the extension was pretty cool that we used. So JSON to TypeScript uh, was definitely helpful to generating, quickly generating these inputs. You really don't want to write them by hand. Um, and otherwise, the, we could probably improve something about this uh, in our service. But for now, it's cool. Uh, again, usually your API key uh, doesn't belong to the front end, so you should put your token definitely in the back end if you want to make this secure. And I'm going to rotate my keys after the uh, live stream just to make sure. Uh, but this, by the way, was also funny. The HTTP interceptor function um, using a functional approach to using Angular today. And you can do the same with um, guards as well, by the way. So... Uh, thanks for joining me today. It was a really fun stream with almost 30 of you tuning in. Uh, I'm now taking a little break. I'm going to be on a cruise, as I said, uh, starting Saturday in Hamburg. Uh, next week, Monday, something in Southampton. Uh, then around to France, to Le Havre, and to Belgium, and to Netherlands, and then back to Hamburg. I don't know if I will ever leave the ship because I just I just want to enjoy the food and the sport and everything on the on the ship. Um, David, random question: How's X numbers doing? Um, good question. I wanted to reach out to my friend again. Uh, yeah, crossing numbers. Um, it's not. So the interesting thing about crossing numbers is. I think it actually isn't too bad. I've played it a few times and I enjoy my own game, which is a good sign. And there's another game called Number Match, which is doing mostly the th same. The UI isn't, isn't mine, it's okay, but it's not really any better. They have daily challenges. And I think if we want to grow our Crossing Numbers app, I think we need something like uh, daily challenges or something, or like a tournament and something like that. Um, so we didn't have time for, for growing that lately because we were, I, mean, I was working on, on galaxies and he's working on uh, renovating an old house. Uh, I think that comes to a conclusion soon, just as galaxies is live. So go check it out, galaxies.dev. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to, I'm also want to do, still want to do a Flutter game. Maybe we can follow up with that uh, in some weeks again. I uh, would love to show you what I got. Uh, I got a real start to a Flutter game already, but I definitely need more. So uh, thanks, David, for asking. Do you have a video on Angular Interceptor? No, but I'm working on a course for the Ionic Academy uh, with JWT authentication and Ionic Angular apps coming hopefully next month. Um, as I said, every month new content for the Academy, just like always. Rasman, have a good break. Yes, thank you very much. I uh, hope I will not get any further ill um, until then. So thanks for tuning in. Check out the Replicate API. Um, next Thursday, no stream because I'm on the cruise, but there will be a nice little quick one that I prepared for you. And next Tuesday will also be some fresh content as always. So go check that out. Leave a like, share the channel. Uh, thanks for your support. And I will hopefully catch you soon. So until then, epicodic. And of course, uh, Captain Ionic is now going to see you.